Hi, I'm Brandon Campo from IWetMyPlantsAquatics.com. I sell submersed aquarium plants. And here today, we are going to be talking about CO2 in your tank at home. A lot of folks ask me how they can get better colors out of their plants or how they can get better growth out of their plants. The answer is simple, it's lighting. However, to use strong lighting, you need to have ample amounts of CO2 in the water. And that's where pressurized CO2 systems come in. Thankfully, Epzone is a great company that makes a affordable, beginner-friendly CO2 setup that can also expand to multiple tanks from one simple purchase. And the price is hundreds of dollars less than other brands. So if you're concerned about being able to afford it, if you're concerned about killing your fish, that's what this video is gonna help you do. We're gonna show you how to set it up completely from the very beginning and how to do it the right way so you can get the plants that you want, you can get the colors that you want, you can get the growth that you want, and you don't have to worry about your fishes dying because that's the number one thing we hear. I don't wanna kill my fish. So when your package arrives, you open up the box, you're gonna find that there's this outlet adapter here and the actual plug is disconnected from it. And the reason for this is because different countries use different plugs. So in this case, all you're gonna do is take the adapter with the appropriate uh, shape on the back and you're just gonna slide it up, snaps in place and you're good to go to plug it in. So there are certain components that you need to have on hand when you're setting up your CO2 system. Uh, first of all would be a tank, the regulator, in this case, it's a dual stage regulator that gives you a high pressure reading and a working pressure reading. The high pressure is how much CO2 is in your tank. If it is below 500, that means there is no more liquid CO2 in the tank and you're running solely on gas. That's an indicator that you need to start preparing to fill your tank up again. The second one is the operating pressure, which is how much uh, flow or pressure is going to be coming to these uh, bubble counters and to the needle valves, which are gonna control the fine amount of CO2 that you're gonna be adding to the system. Some diffusers, like inline diffusers that you would use with a canister filter, they require higher operating pressures versus in-tank diffusers. Of course, you'll need the cable, the power adapter to give power to the solenoid on the regulator. What this solenoid is gonna do is it's going to tell this device when it is time to give CO2 to the aquarium and when it's time to shut it off. So you hook this solenoid into a timer and then your CO2 will automatically turn on and automatically turn off. I recommend an hour and a half to two hours before your lights come on, turning the CO2 on so there's plenty of CO2 available in the aquarium by the time the lights turn on and then to turn the CO2 off about one hour before your lights turn off. Finally, you'll need some sort of hose or tubing to connect the bubble counter to your choice of diffuser, depending on your setup. It is important that you do not use standard airline tubing. You can get 16 feet of CO2 resistant tubing from Epzone on amazon.com for about $9, maybe 10. So now it comes time for the setup. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that where the two points connect to each other, the tank and the regulator are free of debris. Now this area is flat here, this is flat here, and you can see there's no debris on them. However, there is a small little port in here. So what you want to do is just turn your gas on very slightly for a quick second. What that's going to do is blow out any debris that's inside. Next, my recommendation is getting some sort of gasket to place between the two. There is a rubber seal here, and there is a divot for the seal right there, but a gasket never hurts. What we're gonna do here is we're just going to screw our regulator on. Sometimes you gotta get it lined up just right for the threads to take. Now this is steel, and this is a different metal. I believe it is brass, which is softer than steel. So one of the things that you don't wanna do is to go crazy tight cranking this thing down. 
about 20 to 30 foot pounds of torque, but nobody really measures that. You just want it on there nice and good. Don't damage the threads. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna make sure that our operating pressure is as low as it can go. So we're just gonna turn the dial to the negative until it stops. Again, don't crank on it. You'll put some clean water into your bubble counter. About three quarters full is fine. It will evaporate over time. You will need to refill it. Truthfully, once you get everything set up the way that you need to get it set up, I don't pay much mind to it. Most of my bubble counters are running dry right now. So before we connect power to the solenoid, which is ultimately going to allow flow to come through here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the tank on and you're gonna watch that high pressure needle go up and that tells us how much is inside the tank. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this operating pressure dial, but you may notice that it isn't very responsive when you don't have any pressure moving through the system. So ultimately, when we turn this on, we're gonna lose some of that pressure and we're gonna need to adjust it again. Now we're gonna take our CO2 resistant tubing. We're going to unscrew this top portion, which is gonna help ensure that it remains on in the pressure. And we're gonna attach it to the bubble counter, like so. And we'll screw it on to ensure that there are no issues. There's a good seal. You're not losing gas. Again, this operates at a higher pressure than you think and small little leaks can form and your tanks will be running out pretty quick. In this case, we're going to use an in-tank CO2 diffuser. You just get it wet, you get it wet there and it should slide on pretty easily. This is glass and it can be rather fragile, so you don't need to crank on it too much. Place it in. You want your diffuser to be as low in the tank as possible. And if we were to have a filter on this tank, we would put the diffuser at the opposite end of the flow. So in this case, if the flow was coming across the tank, it would hit this wall and come down and it would help circulate that CO2 back through the system and make a nice little circle. That's going to ensure you have even dispersion. Now we're ready to go ahead and attach the solenoid's uh, power cable to it with wet hands. You heard a click there and that was the solenoid opening the valve in here. So now we will turn the needle valve and we'll start to see some bubbles form inside the bubble counter. It is relatively sensitive. You don't need to crank on it. And when you hear people talk about bubbles per second, this is exactly what they're talking about. So depending on the size of your tank is going to depend, uh, dictate where you're going to start. But in most cases for people concerned about herding livestock, the simple answer is simple, about one bubble per second. The higher your operating pressure, the more sensitive this is gonna be. However, you need to have enough operating pressure to work with the ceramic disc inside the tank. Now, if you notice inside the tank, we are not seeing any of those pretty CO2 bubbles coming out of this diffuser. And you might think, well, geez, this was all for nothing. I have a bad diffuser. Those diffusers are supposed to soak for 48 hours before you use them and if they aren't, it takes a while to get them going. You can jumpstart it by turning your bubbles per second up to some immeasurable amount and letting it run for about a minute. That will build up pressure inside the system and soon after, we should start to see some bubbles. There they are. You wanna leave this running for one minute at this velocity after that, your ceramic disc is going to be fully saturated and your CO2 will come out at a level that's appropriate for your setting. Typically, a 10 gallon, a good starting point is half a bubble per second or one bubble every two seconds. A 20 gallon, one bubble per second. A 30 gallon, two bubbles per second. A 40 gallon, I start all of those at three bubbles per second. Anything larger than that, it gets really hard to determine how many bubbles per second you're actually giving 
at an accurate amount because it's too quick. But that's okay. Bubbles per second is not how you're supposed to dose your CO2 injection. The way that you're supposed to dose CO2 injection is based off of the pH of the water. You can do something simple as taking a pH reading before your CO2 turns on, and then every two hours until your CO2 turns off, you're going to want to keep taking pH readings. You're going to want to see your pH go down about 0.8 to one full point. It is temporary. As the CO2 comes out of the water, your pH is going to resume to a level that it was prior to this. And the reason why your pH is dropping is when the CO2 fully saturates with the water, it creates carbonic acid. So your water is becoming slightly more acidic. Another option for measuring the CO2 content of the water is by using a drop checker. And basically what it is, is it's a solution that reacts to the pH and it changes color from blue to green to yellow. Yellow means you're dosing too much. Blue means you're dosing not enough. You want a nice dark to light green color. This was from one of the tanks that I currently have running and this is the pH level in it right now or the CO2 content. Normally what you would do is place this on the opposite side of the tank from your diffuser, low towards the ground, and this is the area that should, in theory, have the least amount of CO2 in the water unless your dispersion is great. So that's how you're gonna know how much is in the water. If you were to put it directly above your diffuser, it would most certainly go yellow and you would think, oh my gosh, I'm doing something wrong. Now, if I were using an inline diffuser for a canister filter, what that does is it pushes the CO2 out through the water from the canister filter. So in that case, it would be going down over there and around. So I would move this drop checker over to this side underneath the flow of the water because in that case, this should be the lowest concentration of CO2 in the water unless your flow is ideal or how it needs to be. Change out the fluid here and give you an idea of what it looks like when it's blue. There you go. This is what it should look like right before your CO2 turns on, meaning that your CO2 content in the water is negligible, standard, whatever you want to call it. So I wanted to take a minute and talk to you guys about why I have an F-Zone regulator here. This is a F-Zone Pro with a Pro Series. Dual stage CO2 regulator 2020 Pro. The reason why I select this one is two points. Number one, it's a dual stage regulator. It helps prevent a, a, a dump of CO2 gas into your tank when you start to run critically low on CO2 in the actual tank itself. Single stage regulators don't really offer much protection against that. Number two, it's the value that it provides. I believe that this regulator, if my memory serves me correct, is about $125 on Amazon. And that is $100 or $200 less than the competition in terms of bringing CO2 to your home aquarium. On top of that, it comes with a second manifold already attached to it. So right out of the gate, you can apply CO2 to up to two tanks. And let's all be honest here, if you're getting to the point to where you're gonna be putting CO2 on your tank, that's because you like aquariums, you like your aquarium plants, and once you figure out how easy this is, you're gonna to wanna to put it on another tank. If you buy a single regulator from somebody else, you're gonna spend $190 to $250, and that's only gonna serve one tank. This is gonna be about 130, let's say, and it's gonna serve two tanks. The best part is, is when you've served two tanks and you wanna serve a third tank, for about $40, you can buy an additional manifold to attach to your regulator to save on cost and you simply undo two screws on the side of the regulator, pull a manifold off, put the new one on, screw it on, screw this one back on, and you're set to go. Of course, you're gonna do that with everything turned off, not while it's running. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you guys 
get comfortable with CO2 at least a little bit. It's a very easy process. It's a great way to get your plants to go grow like crazy and allow you to get some really exotic plants inside your tanks. Let them thrive. Show off the colors to all your friends. Once again, I'm Brandon, owner. I wet my plants aquatics.com. And thank you, F Zone, for hooking us up with an absolutely great product. You should really give it a try. If you're on the fence, this is the company to go with. Thanks again. And remember, wet your plants, not your pants.